Yeah. Well, if the election is supposed to be for de democracy, and if you reserve seats for the military and all that sort of thing, how can it be a democracy? Yes. That's what I'm asking you. <laughs> yes, well, well, I think you, you can't have a democracy if you can't have freedom of assembly or yeah. freedom of speech. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my maternal grandfather state Bangwit used to be such you know, forested country there were teak there the forestry department divided into 30 plots so that they would girdle one plot this year and then cut it down the next year and replant it the year after that and after 30 years it's like a renewable resource. It was always there. But now, uh, and because there was such a big uh, teak forest there, mm -hmm. there used to be rhinoceros in there, mm -hmm. uh, and tigers, and pea, peacocks, and peahen, and everything, pea fowl. In fact, uh, I went there once into that area, and I saw a peacock dancing in the middle of the forest with lots of peahen around him. It was beautiful. <clears throat> but now, I think all the teak forest is gone. <laughs> they must have just sold it off to the Thais. Yeah. You know, in Thailand, because they were cutting down all the teak, the king said, we should be transplanting it, you know, we should regrow our teak. Mm. And yet, the sawmills just kept on going. Yes. And it's because of the teak from Burma. Yeah. yeah. So they're selling off the people's... Yeah, yeah all the, the teak in there. They just grant them to their children and the friends of their children. Right. And these children sell it off. And they get the money and all the forest is gone. So the people of Burma's inheritance has been... Yeah, completely gone. Completely yeah. gone. Something that could be renewable. Yeah. For as long as... Uh, because Burma, now it's, uh, it's you must have witnessed it from Burma being the rice basket of Asia. Yeah. In uh, before the Second World War, it was the largest exporter of rice in the world. Mm. Yeah. Now it has to import rice, mm. and yet people say it is the greatest, potentially the greatest rice-producing country because of the number of rivers, yeah. and flatland. Uh, one of the reasons why they, they couldn't, they lost the opportunity to export rice is that the generals thought if we could produce more rice in the, from the same field, we would earn more. So they brought in a type of rice that would produce 100 baskets uh, per acre. But it's like uh, producing mosque fish instead of, uh, uh, what's that British car? <laughs> Rolls Royce. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. Yeah. So you sell one little oil, it's, it's, it'll be the same as selling 30 uh, mosque no, fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so when they produce this rice and they try to export it, no one would buy it. Yeah. Because the quality is bad, the, the taste is bad. So and, uh, when you witness things like the tsunami, uh, not the tsunami, but Cyclone Nargis, yeah. that must have been devastating for you. Yeah, sure. To, to you know, all the people, you know, seeing all those, uh, even the water buffaloes yeah, yeah. floating in the water there, yeah. and no one going out and cleaning up, mm. and the, all the people having to go and stay in the pagodas and monasteries where the monks could look after them. They have nothing to eat and all the paddy fields are flooded with salt waters. So you can't grow something in salt water. No, you can't grow paddy in salt water. And, and do you think the ethnic alliance has become weaker or stronger? Well, I'm not very sure about that because I, I haven't been personally in touch with the ethnic right. alliance at all. Yeah. Yeah. But it was strong in your days. Yeah. yeah. 
in 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 my days they all had they all came to townji right. and they all agreed on that proposal which we had put up yeah. and all of them signed it except uh, the current team <laughs> why didn't they sign uh, there, there were one or two of them who, who didn't want to sign it i don't you know think why that weakened it, the fact that the current didn't sign uh, well it whether it weakened it or not didn't matter because general newen had decided right that he would uh, take yeah, over there seems to be um uh or the, the burmese government seems to uncover it uh, seems to like to form uh divisions or factions within the ethnic groups yeah yeah Do you think that's something they learned from the British, or something that's <laughs> just a Burmese tactic? No, I think it, it's historical. I think, yeah. and then the Burmese uh, governments oh. from from the days of the Burmese kings, yeah, they've been, been doing that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because uh, uh, what about Kansa? Was he around in your time? Yeah, yeah. And he started out as an independent leader or no he he belonged to one of the states in the shan state right. but uh, he was not actually involved in the you know, in the national politics sort of thing he i think he started off as one of the uh, burmese government's uh, militia group or something like that yeah so he didn't have potential to be a leader no but he became a leader of the MTA at one time right. then yeah but then he went and surrendered to the government right. and the burmese government said oh we take him in because he brought uh, coal for the burmese treasury <laughs> right. coal bullion for them. so he is a good friend of the country yeah Yeah. And what about the SSA today? Uh, I I'm not sure because I have never been there but I read about them all the time in the Shan Herald. Yeah. And do you have a message for the Shan people? Well, my only message is you know, be united, stand together. Unless you are united Uh, no one's going to bother about you. Uh, if you are divided, no, no. you'll always you know, have someone else <laughs> come over you. Yeah. Right. But if you are united, you can be strong. Mm. Yeah. What sort of incidences in your time that, that you were involved in the Burmese politics that you feel was a, a mistake or it, it felt it was an opportunity that wasn't embraced is there any moment no i actually i was in the parliament for only two years right didn't have much opportunity for that yeah right. but uh, while i was in parliament you know, i became personally very friendly with all the other ethnic mm. leaders even including the rohingya yeah right yeah the mons the currents no we were personal friends yes. and uh, there was one mon leader who was also elected as a member of the university council right. to represent the parliament in on the university mm -hmm. council and i was uh, the other one who was there on the university council and uh, my even my my leader was saying no it's okay but don't don't be no don't do everything that that chap <laughs> tells you to do no no decide for yourself but yeah so the mon chap and myself we were on the university uh, board together uh, the governing board of the university